uh, 3 o'clock, I guess we'll get started. Um, my name is Warner Losh, and I'll be talking today about uh, subclassing new bus. Um, I've been on the FreeBSD project for a while. I um, work for Fusion IO doing Flash stuff as my day job. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about new bus. The original talk that I had uh, given for the title that I'd given to Dan for the talk was Unlocking New Bus's Potential. But as I was working on the slides uh, and figuring out what I was going to talk about, I actually think that uh, <laughs> I, I really need to title it How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love New Bus because um, New Bus never was designed completely. Um, it started out really good, very simple, and people added things to it over the years. And I'm surprised that uh, Doug hasn't killed somebody over that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, you know, what exactly new bus is today. Um, but before I get into that, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background on what uh, object-oriented is. Um, because to explain subclassing, I need to explain that a little bit. I'm going to assume everybody is basically familiar with the concepts, so I'll just touch on them briefly. Um, and then talk about how um, the different ways that you specialize new bus, um, and then do a comparison. And uh, once I've done that, I'll talk uh, about how new bus is typically used and um, give a few examples of places that uh, code from the tree that could be improved um, or that uh, might need a little bit of work. So, with that, <clears throat> What is object-oriented programming? It's all this stuff. It's dynamic dispatch, which means different classes can call the same name and get different functions called. It's encapsulation, so you hide the data for your class and don't let other, anybody else see it. Um, it's subtype polymorphism, meaning you can treat a generic object um, like you can everything else. So the classic example of this is in a GUI, you have a bunch of widgets. Um, you treat it a, uh, the GUI as a collection of widgets, and you call like a paint routine or an exposed routine on them when they need painting. Object delegation or inheritance, that means you can um, specialize as part of your parent class so that, um, again, you don't have to re-implement everything. Um, and finally, um, what's called open recursion. Um, I had actually looked this one up when I was putting together the talk. Um, that's just the fancy way of saying you can refer to self or this or something like that, uh, as well as um, refer to an object's superclass in some way. And all these things are put together. You may have a number of other things as well, message passing, um, type safety or other features that go into object-oriented stuff. Over the years, uh, it's become rather a big grab bag of things. So, <clears throat> what's new bus? Well, this is kind of a visual approximation of new bus as we have it in the tree today. We've got, um, you know, these windows are open, those are closed, we've got some state in the object, this clearly stacks nicely, things are almost the same at each layer. Oh, and by the way, we've got a big luggage rack on top. And I don't know why that is, but we do. But seriously, new bus is FreeBSD's con uh, driver configuration method, or mechanism. It's built on top of KOBJ, which is nothing more than a late binding uh, for named calls uh, written in C. Um, that way we can have extensible interfaces, define different protocols for when you're bringing up a bus, bringing up a device, probing a device, seeing if it's there, attaching it, detaching it, different interesting events in the device's life like suspend, resume, maybe shut down. It also manages the namespace. So you can have a number of different devices, that are all UART-like, and you'll get, TTY, um, you'll get UART 0 and UART 1 and UART 2, even if some of the attachments might be to 
um, an internal or an ISA bus on x86. It's not really ISA anymore, but the software calls it that. Um, or a PCI bus or a card bus or whatever. All that gets abstracted and you get a nice, nice namespace management. Um, <clears throat> which dovetails nicely with the next thing that it does. You have polymorphic attachment, and that's just a long way of saying that uh, new bus drivers um, of a particular name can attach to multiple devices. All the name is is a, a namespace, uh, so it doesn't have to be. You, we don't wind up with devices um, like Ed ISA or Ed PC Card or Ed PCI. All of them are just Ed, so that and that's nice. Um, it uh, the, the, the framework has a number of reporting hooks. We have a program called DevInfo that lets you list the device hierarchy, get resource information about the resources that are, it's, are used. Um, the resource mechanism is um, bundled into uh, new bus so that when new buses, uh, new types of buses implement um, the resource management, they can just make use of the library of routines that we have. Um, so, um, and it's very hierarchical. If you don't know how to get something, you usually ask your parent. And if your parent doesn't know how to get something, you ask all the way up the tree. And I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so, summarizing a little bit more. Uh, Newbus provides a abstracted way to call methods. Um, we have a hierarchical, uh, different types of hierarchies built into the Newbus system. The main one being the device uh, instance tree, which starts out at Nexus and goes all the way down to the individual leaf drivers through a number of bus drivers. Um, we have. Um, uh, ways to specialize classes so that when you're implementing PC card, or sorry, card bus, which is very much a PCI bus with a few little doodahs, you can just say, oh, use all the implementation from PCI and I'm going to add my few little doodahs. Um, there's a little bit of data inheritance, although it's really more for uh, kind of as a side effect of IVARs. It's not really the purpose of IVARs. IVARs exist so that a bus can put state, safe state about a child and that, that state can be uh, queried in a regular way. So, um, ugh, this looked better on my screen earlier today. This is a typical device tree. Um, you start with Nexus here, a um, whole bunch of stuff. Um, if you look online, you can see it. It turns out that these are PCI-ish this is ACPI, these are PCI-ish things, and USBs over here somewhere. Doesn't, I'm not really going to talk too much about it, um, so you don't need to see the details, but this is from a typical system. It's kind of crazy. Um, the class hierarchy uh, that we have um, is very flat, because when Nubus started, there was not really a notion of any kind of hierarchy. You had one layer, and that was it. You um, were a class, and you implemented stuff. Now, for PCI and PCI bridges, um, we have inheritance. So different platforms uh, implement their own version of PCI or the PCI bridge. Um, we have a lot of um, most from Open or from uh, PowerPC. Um, that implement their own bridge, uh, and everything else is like one deep. Um, so this literally is all the places in the tree where we use subclassing now. And when I realized this, I thought, hey, I can, I, I can use this for a few, you know, if we made better use of subclassing, we could solve a few of the problems we have in the tree today. Unfortunately, um, we don't have type safety in the function calls. You have to get the function call exactly right, and if you don't, you have weird, hard-to-diagnose bugs. So 
the way that most of the um, drivers do it is they declare the device, um, the uh, method, um, or the, the C function, they put it in a me their method table and then hope for the best. But uh, for anybody that knows the probe signature, you'll notice that the probe signature is wrong. This code will compile just fine, but you won't get a warning for it. So if you try to use values that are, you think are being passed in, it won't work. Um, it would be less unsafe to say, well, I know I have a, a foo probe, so I can have the device probe T. I know that that is the proper signature. I can declare it like that, put it in here. Now if you have a signature mismatch, you get a compiler error. Great, but it's not completely safe because <clears throat> um, what if I'd put attach here and probe here? Um, they would, that would only work if there was um, not, uh, if the, they had the same signature. But we wouldn't catch it if they didn't. So um, we don't have type safety. Um, and this slide summarizes all of that. It turns out that we can make things safer and at least ensure that the signatures match. Um, it won't solve the particular probe versus attach because they have the same signature. Um, but if we apply this diff, um, we can make that much more safe. So as soon as my machine at home gets done cranking through a make universe, um, I'll commit this. But um, an AMD64 kernel with this change compiles and boots generic um, and also compiles lint. So I, I'm pretty confident that that will work. So how does new bus match up with object-oriented programming? Well, it matches up OK. We have dynamic dispatch. We have encapsulation um, because uh, we've got um, everything goes into a soft C and that hides it nicely. Um, there's generally no exposed functions, um, although some buses break that rule. Uh, unfortunately, PCI is a big one that breaks it. Um, we can uh, have subclassing, um, or uh, subtype polymorphism, I mean, where you can override methods from one type of class to another. Um, delegation, open recursion, not really. We can have classes of object, but nobody really uses that at all in the system. Um, methods don't act, really act as objects, except at the really lowest layer. Uh, message passing, yes, that's one of Newbus's big strengths. Abstraction, mm, a little bit. And type safety, mm, not really right now. So what are the different ways that you can subclass in Newbus? Um, turns out that there are basically three that you can do. Two are um, available for um, drivers and buses, and the third one's really only available for buses and only to a limited extent. Um, so the first one of these is a direct um, inheritance. And this is something that we don't do much in the tree right now, except for various classes of PCI. Uh, in this, you say, I am a new type of foo. Uh, I'm a bar that's a type of foo, using the defined class macro. Uh, one of the nice things about new bus is that you can have single, multiple, um, you know, inheritance. I think we define up to five, and it would be relatively easy to have more. Um, just like a public inheritance in C++ for methods, it inherits all the interface of the parents, um, allowing you to override them if you desire or keep the parents' uh, class the same. Um, but uh, generally in our tree, it's only used to deal with particular quirks of different platforms or PCI bridges. It's not really used in our tree to, to, the, the, to any extent. Um, Cardbus is the one big exception where we add a lot of code that isn't at all relevant to PCI, um, but is very relevant to Cardbus. In Cardbus, we 
PCI doesn't have a notion of a, what's called a SIS, which is the information that Cardbus has on each of the cards to um, describe what resources it uses, describe what voltages it needs to be powered on with, and so forth. Um, so, the next thing that we have in the tree is an interface inheritance. And really, that's more of objects can implement an interface. Um, we have about 30 different interfaces in the tree. The most common are for dealing with um, device or bus attachment. Um, and the way we use it in the tree, it's best thought of as a protocol. I want to attach the device, um, so I call the, uh, so before I do that, I call a driver's probe routine. It says, yes, I understand this device. The bus then goes, oh, okay, I will attach you now. And it can um, do that in any order. Um, it can do, probe all the items first, or it can probe one and attach one. Um, the clients uh, don't um, need to be written so they don't care. And fortunately, all of them that are in the tree now don't really care. Um, but it is up to the client devices to implement any protocols in this properly um, because um, we have no automated tools to test. Uh, we know that they're not implemented properly when uh, the kernel doesn't boot or the device doesn't work. And so that's one of the weaknesses in, um, that we have in Nubus. Um, one of the nice things, though, is that you're not constrained to just implement one interface. You can implement as many different interfaces as you want. You can implement all of them or part of them uh, as your driver needs, um, which is very flexible. So we have several devices in the tree that implement bus and device protocols, as well as two or three others for I2C or uh, MMC uh, for SD cards or um, what have you. Uh, for M um, MMI for uh, PHY attachment for network drivers is another one. Um, and this arrangement gives us a nice separation. We don't have big tables that we can't add things to anymore. Uh, so that insulates drivers from change fairly effectively. Unfortunately, um, it can be hard to change the protocol in a meaningful way. You have to be very careful when you're changing the meaning of something. If you want probe uh, to do something new, you have to look at the existing behavior and then figure out the new behavior you want and look at all the different drivers in the tree to see if any of them violate it. Um, it so changing the protocol can be kind of, kind of difficult. Finally, um, the last thing we have in new bus is data inheritance. But that's to a very limited extent. Right now we have IVARs. Um, we have methods to get and set IVARs um, and a number of macros, accessor macros for the different bus values. So in PCI, you're, you're not writing this big complicated git IVAR for the vendor and having to parse and see if it succeeded or not. You just call PCI git vendor and it wraps it all up and returns it to you. Um, Cardbus makes, takes advantage of this by adding a couple additional IVARs of its own that it uses. But um, really, there's not a lot of, um, this doesn't really help you a lot if you're trying to do data inheritance. So, um, so. Here's a quick example, and the green on the screen is kind of hard to read, uh, for which I apologize. Um, I was trying to match the look of the website, and I guess our website wouldn't look very good on the screen up here. So um, we've got the methods for the device that would be defined further in the, uh, up in the file. Um, we've got... Um, a little structure that defines what the name of the device is, how big of a soft C to allocate for it, and the, the methods that go along with it, 
And then we've got um, a macro that ties it all together that says this bus, the EP bus, will attach to PC card and um, you know the description of the uh, device is here. Here's a dev class to use, and here's a function and a uh, function pointer to call on, or um, argument uh, for that function to call when the device, the module is loaded. Almost nobody uses those last two things, but they can come in very handy. <coughs> if we were to look at the same thing for ISA, which I didn't include as a slide, it would look much the same, except ISA would be here, and the naming convention would put ISA there and here. Um, but it would share the same dev class. Um, even if you didn't, even if you had static dev classes and all the definitions, there's only one that gets used. Um, this is just an allocation convenience for early boot. Um, but the interesting thing here is this device name would still be EP. It would be EP for everybody. Um, and Newbus provides the routines to manage. Oh, you're the first EP unit I've seen, you're EP zero. You're the second EP unit, you're EP one. Um, it also provides some mechanisms for saying, oh, on this address, I want to have EP three or something. So. <clears throat> so, to summarize briefly, um, multiple drivers, uh, driver attachments can have the same name. Um, the interface defines a protocol between different parts of the tree. Um, drivers can subclass other drivers, but you have to coordinate. The subclass driver has to understand how the parent driver does all its things. Um, and sometimes for driver attachments, Rather than make use of subclassing, we have long lists of drivers. And I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. Um, and I have the last point said the same way twice. So here's a couple examples. Today, when you have a keyboard in the system, um, you know, it'll attach somewhere in the system. If it's an AT keyboard, it'll attach off an AT controller which um, will attach to something, either um, an ISA bus bridge um, up to the Nexus or to ACPI or something. It doesn't really matter. Same thing for a USB keyboard. You've got um, U keyboard zero, it attaches to the hub, which attaches to the USB bus, which eventually winds up at Nexus. Um, this is really nice. It's very simple. But um, there's some problems with this. So if you look at the D message here, if I grab for keyboard, keyboard one is at mux zero, and keyboard zero is at AT keyboard zero, and keyboard two is at U keyboard zero. Well, at runtime, how do I figure this out? You could look at D message, but D message might disappear. You could look at var log, sorry, var run D message dot boot, which works great unless you plugged in the USB after the, that was captured, um, or you unplugged a USB and plugged in something else. Um, and if you look in dev info, you'll see nothing. I mean, you can, you can grep around and find that AT keyboard is there, but it doesn't tell you what it's associated with. So I'm going to propose a solution to this, um, and we'll see how well that actually works out. Um, the first part, um, keyboard mux isn't known to new bus. So we'll create a dummy node, uh, attach it to Nexus for the keyboard mux. Um, we'll create a keyboard um, class that corresponds to the dev keyboard entries. There'll be a new keyboard B base class that anything that's a keyboard in the system will derive from. And um, we'll go through and change all the drivers in the system that are keyboards to derive from this. Thankfully, there's only five. Um, I've listed them up here. Um, and we'll change 
uh, right now some of the drivers um, don't have a device, uh, a, a device T associated with them. So when we get them, um, we need to make sure that we plumb that information through to where we actually create the driver. So graphically, it looks like this. We create a new base class uh, for the keyboard. We add a keyboard mux. We put the keyboard mux in the tree. And then when we attach these instances, we also attach new device T nodes. Yes? That's a, that's a good question. Um, the reason for that is, um, I didn't think of it before the talk. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's the, that's the real reason. Um, but the other reason is, traditionally in the tree, there's been a correspondence between the module name, the new bus name, and the thing you interact with in the system. So um, we would get two of the three of those if we called everything keyboard. So if this was keyboard zero, this was keyboard two, and you still, see that you still get the because the controller. Yeah, you would see that. You would see that. Yeah. So you would you would know where it was, and you would you would be able to interact with it through dev keyboard zero, and that would show up there. But if you wanted to know what devices to add to your kernel, you wouldn't add device. KBD, you would have to know to add device ATKBD that silently doesn't tell you that it's there and implements keyboard. So, um, so that's, that's, why I, that's why I came up with this solution. But um, yeah, we could, we could do it either way. Or there's, there's another way that for when I talk about TTYs here in a second that we could potentially do instead. Um, which would be um, don't subclass at all and go ahead and create these things. But um, at the um, add an attribute to the AT keyboard that says, I'm at this device, or have a generic way of saying that these devices are associated with this piece of hardware. But the, by devices, I mean these nodes in slash dev are serviced by this hardware. It's purely an advisory, um, hey, this is here uh, sort of thing. We don't necessarily try to manage lifetimes and such with that. Um, but I haven't thought that all the way through. There's probably some dragons in there as well. So any other questions? Does that answer yours? Yeah, so I, so I don't know if I'll commit the code that I wrote for this. Um, the changes are easy. Um, just derive this. And for the keyboard attach, I had to create a keyboard attach device that passes the device in so it keeps book on it all. And there's only one place that would attach these nodes. Um, so. This is what the base class would look like. I just needed a print child routine, so it would print everything out. Um, and the keyboard driver is kind of almost nothing there, which also suggests that perhaps it's not the right way to go. You know, why have a, why have a driver that's just there for a name and a node to associate things? Um, Here's how I changed the keyboard attach routines, but or wrote these new routines to play along with keyboard attach and keyboard detach. Um, if you want to read through that, you can see my slides online. Um, so another area that we could deal with that, that is kind of messy with new bus right now is um, the TTY. There's no real common naming convention. So if, it's, uh, if the UART driver provides the TTY, it's TTYU0, TTYU1. 
lowercase u. Um, oh, and also CUA0 and CUA1 for the calling unit. Um, all of the USB TTYs are lumped together with TTY capital U. Um, and they mostly match to the devices as you plug them in order, except um, if you've got a multi-port serial device, you wind up with funky names like TTYU 0.3 if for the fourth port on the, the first multi-port card that you plugged in. And that doesn't um, map well to, to new bus. And there's 15 drivers in the tree. So we've got kind of a situation that looks like this, where, yeah, it uses the bus stuff, but it just doesn't seem to be put together quite right. You know, you look at it and you go, something's wrong with this. So um, one of the proposed solutions would be to do the same thing that I did to um, keyboards, where we create a new TTY new bus, have the base class, derive all the TTY classes from that, create another one for potentially for um, USB or just reuse the same name. Um, and then we would connect the TTYs to that. But since we don't have the, a unified namespace, um, you would run into a problem where you have a disconnect between the, the port numbers and the names. Um, again, you could use DevInto to find stuff, which would be an improvement, but it still would be kind of a, a bit of a, a dog's breakfast, as, as people um, like to say. Um, so we could do that, and we would wind up with DevInfo adding a device equals whatever um, to the TTY thing. Um, as I was finalizing these slides, I realized it would be a lot simpler just to add a property here that said, device equals whatever, and then you would know the mapping to the device, you wouldn't have to insert all this extra stuff, we would just need to have a list of things that did that. Of course, realizing this and also made me realize, hey, if I talk about that, I'm not going to talk much about new bus subclassing because new bus doesn't really get into it, it would be just become a resource that um, the uh, dev info would would know. And that might be a better, frankly, a better way to, to deal with this mess. <clears throat> um, the other method John and I were talking about, John Baldwin and I were talking about this the other night. He said, well, you could just force UCOM for all of the serial devices. That's another way to deal with it. But then you run into the mismatch. Oh, UCOM zero attached. Great. Which of the 20 drivers was that? If I want to cut down the kernel, how do I know which one to use? Um, the only way to really know that is you have to look at dev info output and try to match things up, and they don't. Um, and again, multiport would break um, the name also. Um, and another thing way that John and I talked about was, well, the other way to avoid this without adding a device equals whatever would be to change the TTY names. And I'm just probably, I should just probably stop talking about that right now because we've changed the TTY names in every uh, odd major release, um, you know, since, th since uh, three, I think. We've changed them like three or four times. Um, and one of the, you know, the two, th two complaints I hear about FreeBSD are, why can't I get X to work on my Intel hardware? And why do you keep changing the TTY names? You know, it's, so, so MII bus has a lot of attachments in the tree. Every new driver adds a new attachment, uh, so there's no centralized list to know where things are. Um, if we did a MII B base class, we could make things simpler. And this is just, again, going through the same sort of um, stuff that we went through before, um, but I'm not sure it would buy us much. So 
That would be one way we could use new bus subclassing in the tree that would not be invasive. Um, but I, like I said, I, I, I don't think it would buy us a whole lot over what's there. Um, MMC bus. There's five different drivers in the tree that implement a MM, MMC bridge. Um, and so we've got um, a chance, you know, we've got all of these different drivers. Um, we could, in the MMC.C, we could say, well, MMC attaches, or MMC bridges attached to MMC, but that's, I think, a little bit the wrong way around. Um, I like Doug's idea of just calling them all MMCBs rather than having the different ones. You're only going to have one particular one on your platform. They don't need to have a unique name, so why, why give them unique names? So this would be solved either way. I'm having, you know, thought about what Doug suggested 15 minutes ago. I think that's probably better, um, a better way to approach this. Um, you won't get to know what kind of device you're using, but on any given platform, there's only one, so you don't have to know. So this would be a perfect match for that. <clears throat> um, one of the things I found while I was looking through this, though, it's an interesting problem in the SDHCI bus, um, where it uses uh, KOBJ to look like new bus, or sorry, to do bus-based translations. Um, and, and looking into the code, it left me scratching my head a little bit that, um, you know, there's three different implementations for these. One adds bus barriers, the other two don't, and one does Indian modification and the others don't. Generally in the tree, we do Indian modification in the bus space layer, and why would one type of bus attachment need the barriers and the other not? Got me scratching my head uh, trying to figure that out. So these are the different um, methods that do that, and this is the different code. So we have the barrier here, no barrier here, and um, Indian manipulation here. And if you look at the other, um, uh, to get the, the right offsets and stuff. Um, it's like, I was looking at this code and I was wondering, what's wrong with this picture? And um, I don't have an answer key for this, so if I don't even know what to say about this. So, um, yeah, it just left me scratching my head a little bit, so I thought I'd toss it into the talk um, to see if, um, you know, there was something here we needed to, to do something about or not. I'm also getting ready to go off and implement another attachment, too, uh, for the all-winner SDHCI uh, or um, device that's on it. Um, although I'm hoping to be able just to use the FTDI one because it should just be in the FTDI tree. Anyway, that's all I have uh, for my talk. I guess I ran a little bit short. Um, does anybody have any questions? That, uh, John. So you're so th you're suggesting that we place just the new bus name in dev. Yep. How okay, and then how do we map uh, keyboard zero to that? Which um, different routine different, pro huh? Anymore. Keyboard right, but how does X know which keyboard to open for? How do we configure that? Okay, so the installer solves that problem for us, is the answer. Yeah. It certainly would be less of a hassle to, to, to do. We would still need to pass the name in to the creation routine, so we'd have some, some stuff to work on. Well, but. Asking, yeah. Justin? You talked about concerns about carrying out your kernel and the other people's kernel 
Yes. To, to, you can make it a, a method, uh, so the suggestion is to make, um, add a new bus method that would keep track of which module the device T came from, and you could then. It would be the driver, or the driver would say, this is what my like. Okay. Okay, that's actually a, that's <clears throat> that's a good idea. We we could very much do that. Brooks. The device equals blah would be new information. Yeah, we should talk. That sounds very interesting. <clears throat> it would, I, would I would do it basically as treating it as a resource um, on the device, so then all the resource code that's printing that, but the different, um, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, that needs to be cleaned up as well, so. <clears throat> so this is, a, you know, things are a, a bit of a mess. I mean, that's why I put this slide in. Doug. Yes. What was the performance like in your branch when you did that? Couldn't measure it. Um, I did measure um, points of reference. That seems to make sense. Compared to a direct function of the point of your three heads, the cost would cause a function of going through the message dispatch to reach that level. But for um, bus space, Yeah, only on the slowest 386 um, would we have, um, you know, would the instruction cycle time approach any kind of overhead for that. Well, a lot of that has been taken out over the years, uh, much to um, Scott's chagrin. <clears throat> <laughs> Or at least I've heard, uh, I've heard that critique at lunch a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so. Yeah, I know, I know, I know PowerPC uses it to implement um, different VM dispatch for the different um, the difference between Bookie and the old Macintosh, which is called something else in the kernel. I can't remember right now, but um, I know it's used there. What's you have experience with that? Um, uh, what's the um, I've, what's the overhead like in using it for that? Okay. Is that something you've been able to measure or is that, you know, we've done it and the thing boots and it doesn't feel any slower? <coughs> I, I've never had a need to measure it. So. 
Okay, so it's. So was, were you saying that the, the, the comment for everybody else in the room was that um, for relocatable code, it's actually faster to call through a function pointer than it is to go through the got table? OK. Okay. That makes that makes good sense. Um, any other questions or comments or discussion points? Yes. Not that I know of, but this is the crowd that to, to add. It'd be easy to add, I think. Right, but. The part of the problem is that um, KBD zero doesn't come from Newbus at all, so it's it's allocated um, by the system. But let's see, I have this on a slide. Oh. It's interesting that KBD one is allocated first for keyboard mux, and then keyboard zero is allocated, and then keyboard two. So. That suggests that there's some reservation going on um, that we might, you might be able to tap into. But I don't think there's a good interface to do that right now. We should probably add one. Yeah, we don't, we don't have a good mapping there. I mean, that's the, the, the exact problem I have with um, uh, different TTYs that I plug in for my different boards. It's when I reboot, it comes up in a different order because this one's a little faster, this one's a little slower. Oh, I didn't have that one plugged in, or you know, I rearranged a little bit, and now to get to my MIPS board, it's, it's, I have to tip to you know, UCOM 3 instead of UCOM 2 or 1 or something. You know, it's, If I've seen a device through this path before or with these attributes, um, I gave it this name. Is that, is that what it does? OK.
Yeah, we don't really have a registry to, yeah. and a lot of people consider this a big feature. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, and that's a, a feature a lot of people, like, really like, so. Um, so, yeah, there's not a good solution to the sound problem, and we probably need one. You know, I, I would agree with that. Anything else at this point, or any other questions? Um, well, I implemented this for the keyboards, and people, I got kind of a lukewarm response, I would say, for my solution, and I, I was planning on implementing it for TTYs, but um, there might be better ways that we talked about during the talk. I, I noticed you came in late, I don't, but I think we were, you were here for that, where we were talking about the um, adding a device entry in DevInfo so that we can associate a device T with something in slash dev that the user can interact with so that you can look up and map that. I mean, so, so often you just get a, a, a Linux program and you get it compiling, and it's just, oh, I have to play the magic so I don't know which device is in, and then you know, rotate our, our, our rounds. So sometimes it's just being able to you know, do something simple and maybe it's a little bit dumb, but it works. And Yeah, I would agree. I, I totally agree. It's it's a pain for me, and um, I use this stuff every day, and I'm annoyed by it every day. And I, I wouldn't take the fact that people were blue for the I was actually going to joke when you were talking about it. I came in a little late, not too late, because I was I was at this slide pretty much. Oh, okay. And, and the joke I was going to say was, how many people here use keyboards on two disks in each room? Yeah. Right, and the, the, the whole reason I chose to attack keyboard was there were um, five, there were five devices I needed to touch, and I wanted to get it right with this before I went and touched the 20 devices that um, are in, you know, we, have, we literally have 20 different drivers that implement USB serial in our tree. Mm -hmm. um, or you might have some steps that make it really helpful for him. That's not about that. Okay, I'll try to catch him. Is he, is he still around? I haven't seen him today. He, he left. He left right. Okay, I'll, I'll send him. Actually, he left the yeah, I, I'll send him an email then. Yes. Ah, okay, so they're, um, they're not, they, they, they don't implement the SDHCI there protocol? There's some real tech who ignores the SDHCI or the DAS, its ignore flavor, and some other uh, record and uh, Texas instruments, 
controllers wish to completely own stuff. I don't have a citation for, but they are implemented in Linux. Okay. Do you have a data sheet or just a Linux driver for them? No, just Linux driver. Uh -huh. the sheets. Okay. That's good to keep in mind. That's that's a good piece of information. Okay. If there are no more questions, I think we'll call it a day. It's we'll have the.